Just when you think 2020 couldn't get any worse, we have a massive virus, people losing their jobs, and now a legendary guitarist, Eddie Van Halen, tragically passes away at 65. Couldn't it get any worse. You know, I heard someone say we should just be thankful that we, you know, were a generation that lived at the same time as Van Halen because like it's like us to um to Jimi Hendrix, you know, I wish I was alive when Hendrix played. That's who this guy was to music, you know, in 10, 20 years, it's going to be, I wish I was alive when Van Halen played. So on today's episode, we talk about what Eddie Van Halen meant for us. We're going to do our top 10 Van Halen songs, uh, how Eddie Van Halen influenced our childhood and any other tidbit of information we'd like to share. But before we get into that, if you like us, like, share, subscribe for more. So what did Eddie Van Halen mean for you or even just Van Halen in general? So, <laughs> apart from like the weird hairdos, I when I started getting into Van Halen, I just thought they were fun. Like Jump, Hot for Teacher, uh, and this isn't our top 10 list, by the way, but just like, I thought their music was actually just fun to listen to. And this was before I could really appreciate the musicianship and what was going into it. And not just Eddie Van Halen, like that whole roster was phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. Um, but at the time, before I really recognized what I was actually listening to, I just, they were just fun to rock out to. Uh, David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar? I was hoping you wouldn't get into this because this is controversial, but <laughs> no David way. Lee Roth. Yeah. Sammy Hagar is a fantastic singer, but David Lee Roth is a showman and I love it. <laughs> uh, and I can say that because I've seen them both live in concert. And David Lee Roth, even for his age, puts on a hell of a show. But don't get me wrong, Sammy did as well. Well, I remember when we went, uh, I shouldn't say, I I know that we went. I just don't remember the show that well. <laughs> I didn't know we went together. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good weekend then. We did? Yeah. What? Yeah. Which concert? With, with, oh, with David, that was a, s okay, I don't remember that. I don't remember. Yeah. Are we... In the crowd, or are we like sitting down? Like, I don't even know. We were on the floor. My wife was there. Your brother was there. Okay. Okay. And okay. I spent more time trying to stay on my feet because we had a little bit too much to drink on the way to the show. We wouldn't do that. No. Was... <laughs> have we ever went to a concert sober? <laughs> it enhances yes, we have. experience. It enhances <laughs> it. Uh... Anyway, back to the band. <laughs> yeah. I've always been like super into classic rock and I, I think why Van Halen means the most to me well I listen to music daily so I, I do rotate my Van Halen but it meant more to me because growing up when we'd go on road trips that'd be the first thing my dad would play is Van Halen uh, and it would obviously be his 19, 1978 self-titled album and he would play the crap out of it mm -hmm. and he wouldn't let us change it he wouldn't let us turn down the volume but as we got older, we did nothing but appreciate what Van Halen brought to the table in terms of musicianship and energy. So it meant a lot. And it really introduced me to more like heavy, heavier songs, which I will get into in my top 10 list. <laughs> yeah, I, um, you know, I was telling you before this, if I had to pick like the type of guitar that I listen to, it's not like Eddie Van Halen's sound is my absolute favorite. But the music was still amazing and his like what he did and when he did it um revolutionized rock and roll absolutely and you can just see it with all the tributes that are pouring in after he died and all the people that he's influenced from all different walks i mean we, we got country music singers that are covering their songs and putting them on social media as, as a tribute to van halen like yeah. every genre every guitar player has listened to Van Halen and gone, you know, God damn, I wish I could tap like him. I think what I like the most about Van Halen is how humble he seemed to be. Like, he, I never felt like listening to his interviews or watching him live that he had that air of superiority of a celebrity where I'm larger than life. You know, he kept to himself. He was very private and he, and he spoke pretty honestly and I loved it. You know what I mean? As opposed to gloating or saying how great he is, he was more not necessarily embarrassed to talk about his techniques, but more like down to earth about it. You know, like, yeah, yeah, we'll show you no problem. You know? 
Well, it's funny because when he when he first like hit the scene, and he would play like he would play Eruption. He, you know, the legend goes he would turn his back so people can see it. And so before this, I was like, well, is that really a like is that really a true story? So I was doing some research, and I guess apparently he had said it was because the 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 competition to get a record deal at that time was so intense that he didn't want anyone to see. And then after he got his record deal, he stopped doing it. But you know, it's um, I don't know, like it just shows how innovative he was. You know, have you ever seen his son do it? No. Uh, so Wolfgang released that tribute video too, of him tapping along to uh, Eruption. It was pretty neat. Pretty talented young kid too. Obviously, it runs in a family. Yeah. Uh, but the kid plays drums, guitar, bass, sings, yeah. does everything. Um. So before we get into our top 10, is there any highlight or any tidbit of information you'd want to share about Van Halen and their importance to you? And their importance to me. Um, so I, I play a little bit of guitar. Like I don't, and and the, the group that I play with, we wanted to play, uh, they wanted to play Jump. Um, and for me, it was a song right away I was intimidated by it because I was like, how do you pick up a guitar and play jump you know um for me it, i i looked at it more as like a challenge right it's something to aspire to uh right. something to motivate me to be better and the thing about van halen is you know you're likely never going to be as good as him right he's a rock <laughs> god so it's always someone who's kind of pushed the envelope and inspires you to do the same and so for me who's like a hack guitarist like, I know it maybe seems a little bit silly that I'm just trying to say I'm inspired by Van Halen. You know, I'm not going to go and develop some amazing technique or revolutionize rock. But um, what he did for music is inspiring to me. And it kind of just drives me to, to try that new thing and to be a little bit better. And one day I'm going to play jump and go, eh, hey, it didn't sound too bad. <laughs> you know? But that's the beauty of listening to somebody like Van Halen. It gives you something to work towards. It doesn't have to be music. It could be sports. It could be writing. It could be your career. You always have somebody where you want to aspire to be, right? Yeah. What about you? Um, (laughs) I kind of go back to my dad and Van Halen. So when my brother and I were super, super small, my dad would sing happy trails to us to put us to bed. And obviously I can't remember that because we were probably, you know, two, three years old, but to my dad, it's extremely important. And he still to this day, 35 years later, brings it up and any anytime we talk about Van Halen. Hmm. So to me, it's important because it meant a lot to him and it'll be something that I want to pass on to my kids. So the day that uh, Van Halen died, I was driving my kids to daycare. And normally we listen to like their kids' songs or anything popish that they could dance and sing to in the back seat. That day, I was like, nah, I got I to gotta play some Van Halen. And the greatest part is, I, I can't remember what song I put on. Oh, I put on uh, something like The Greatest Head. So just kind of mix up their uh, best classics. And I don't. I think it was Ain't Talking About Love. And all of a sudden, both kids are like, what is that? And I'm like, Van Halen. They're both like, turn it up. And I was like, okay, four and three years old, asking me to turn up Van Halen. And I was like, okay, I will crank <laughs> as loud as you want, buddy. Proud it's moment. Up. It was great. Oh, and the last thing I want to add. So my brother and I growing up, uh, so obviously my brother could play uh, any instrument as well. He's super into music. And I am, on the other hand, cannot play anything. But I always wanted to play drums. So we always joked uh, about being the new Van Halen brothers because he could play guitar and I pretended like I could play drums. So uh, it was just one thing that my brother and I bonded with. See, Van Halen just brings everybody together. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> So how about right. we get oh, into that's, our, that's great. Why don't we get into our top 10 and start working down our list here. So you want to kick it off or? Sure. So I chose one that was kind of like middle grounds um, in terms of popularity. Nothing incredibly spectacular, more piano driven. I picked right now. So when I first started listening to Van Halen, I was more into like the Sammy era just because it was like time wise. And uh, I don't know, there's something about the song. I like the message behind it. I love the piano. And I did like Sammy's vocal approach to it. But there's just something about right now that I just, I never get sick of. Mm-hmm. How about you? Um, so I'm going to start with uh, finish what you started. <laughs> Maybe I should have ended with that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, 
It's just one of those songs like you rock out to, you know? Yeah, ain't the way to treat the broken hearted. You know? I lo- anyway, I love that song. So my, my first song I'm going to list is Finish What You Started. I don't mind that song. Get a little acoustic intro. Yeah. Uh, my next one, Ain't Talking About Love. Yeah, I could probably hum. That's another. Yeah, I could probably hum the whole guitar by heart. Uh, heavy song, beautiful first album from them. Good lyrics from David Lee Roth. Good energy. Plus, it follows Eruption, so I mean, they go hand in hand. It yeah, awesome. Well. I didn't have eruption on my list of like songs to highlight, but I did have it as a, as an honorable mention at the end, just because, you know, it's not necessarily like a full song, but it's eruption. It's famous. So I'll just throw that in there. <laughs> It'll always be uh, associated with Eddie Van Halen, right? Like the two go ahead yeah. together. They just go together. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm going to go with don't tell me what love can do. I do love that song so much, so much. I love it. I don't even really know why I love it so much, but it's just like, it's not, it's not super duper like mainstream. And it's just one of those songs that just, is just kind of fun to listen to. It's cool. It's got like different changes in and transitions. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, I've always loved that song. I love the guitar in that song. I love it because it's heavy, but it's like a ballad at the same time. So it's like mm. the best of both worlds. I love it. Yeah. Um, my number three is Little Guitars. Probably like a really obscure song, uh, almost like folkish in how it sounds. But uh, I just like their little obscure songs, like nothing mainstream. I mean, I do like their mainstream, but I like the little the songs that kind of flow in the background, little filler songs. Mm-hmm. It's really catchy. Check it out. Uh, well, considering we were just talking about Heavy, Unchained. Yep. Yeah, it's the intro to that. You're just like, oh, and it sounds yeah. like a Van Halen song. Like Van Halen's one of those bands that they have a sound, right? And it's the, it's the guitar, right? Yep. It's, it's Eddie Van Halen. And so Ooh. the minute it starts, like, okay, that's a Van Halen song. Even if you don't know the song, you know it's a Van Halen song. I will agree with you know with Eddie, but I will also say that Alex Van Halen, the drummer, is very audible as well. I mean, oh, he has a very, time. very, very distinct sound. I love it. Yeah. Uh, my number two, House of Pain. Not many people know it. It's on their 1984 album, one of their best-selling albums. Um, and it kind of gets shoved to the background because that album has, like, All Wait and Hall for Teacher and, like, all the classic Van Halens. But House of Pain... It is one of the songs that really started getting me into like heavier metal because it is pretty heavy. The drums are intense, the guitar is awesome. I'd almost classify it more as a metal than a rock song. Yeah, I you know what? I, I can't place it, so Yeah. Um But I'm gonna go with a more pro- a more prominent song, uh, Hot for Teacher. So you're just talking about Alex, the intro. Like the minute long double bass kick intro into that song. And then you get into like, and talk for teacher, like, okay, who can relate? <laughs> Who's had a hot teacher that kind of had a crush on? Grade nine math right here. Grade nine math. Oh, yeah, grade nine math. <laughs> 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 if, uh... you, pick up my... <laughs> you know, it was a good one if we both had the same answer. Uh, We're not going to say names, but... Uh, no, but every time I hear that song, that's who I think of. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, before I get into my number one, I actually have a bonus, and this is kind of cheating because it's like four songs. They're in order. It's Fools, Romeo Delight, Tora Tora, and Loss of Control. Uh, this is from the Woman and Children First album, which is my personal favorite album. But all four songs go together. They're so intertwined and so random and out there and hilarious that they are worth listening to women and children first amazing album check it out uh which leads do you have a bonus eruption well, so you, we're talking about like you can hear van halen and you can always pick them out this isn't a van halen song and i'm sure since he's died everyone's been hearing about this already but eddie van halen played the solo on beat it by michael jackson 
And the minute, like, so first off, Beat It's an incredible, incredible song. And the story behind how he got into that, like, song is is kind of funny. Because you didn't think, like, who is this kid? No one's going to hear. I'm just going to do a favor for, for a buddy producer of mine. Next thing you know, it's freaking Michael Jackson. Um, and it blows up as, like, one of Michael's best ever songs. Anyway, he plays a solo in that. And the minute he plays it, if you know Van Halen, you're like, is that maybe Van Halen? You know, you can just hear it. Um, and I love that he that he jumped into like a different genre. He plugged into an MJ song and still made it sound like. I love Michael Jackson, but too, by the way. <laughs> That's our next video. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> All right. So what's your number one? My number one is uh, a song from a soundtrack. It's Humans Being. Mm. Yes, hum- Humans Being. Not human beings, but humans. Um, I don't know. I heard that song, and I'm pretty sure that was the song that sparked, number one, my love for Van Halen, but number two, my love for Heavier. I know I'm kind of like saying that through a lot of the songs, but this is just... An amazingly heavy song, plus Sammy Hagar screams, not just sings, but has a little bit of like growl to it. I love it. Super mm-hmm. aggressive, high energy, very heavy, great drums, great guitar. Everything that I expect and want from a Van Halen song is my number one, Humans Being. Nice. Yep, hands down. Uh, my number one, uh, and it's really just, it's really the intro and like the, the riff in it, is uh, Running With The Devil. <laughs> that just that starting off with that slide and bow, bow, bow. <laughs> as soon as as soon as it drops in you're just like okay yeah i'm into this um i love it and then, running with the devil it's great song uh top to bottom i love it so that's probably my all-time favorite uh, van halen song my dad has a wicked story about that um so when he used to be younger and like in their party mode um, they'd be passed out at the cottage and one of his buddies would probably worked late night shift, uh, would show up at two, three o'clock in the morning back in like the eighties. And what he would do, he'd crank his stereo and he'd play running with the devil to wake everybody up to be like, no, 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 ain't no bad time. It's round two. <laughs> I'm like, I can appreciate that. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> I mean, God, there's so many good Van Halen stories too. Um, like, so I was reading up on, you know, we've all heard the no M&M's story. Have you heard that story? No. So apparently back in the David Lee Roth days when they were touring, they had, um, they had a con in their contract. It said that they're in the back green room. You couldn't have any brown M&M's <laughs> and th- this got out and everybody thought it was because they were a bunch of, you know, drama queens, right? They were just being dramatic and divas. Um, But it turns out the reason they did it was because when they were touring, they had really heavy duty lights because they put on such a show that they needed special accommodations at the venue. And so they put it, that would be in the list of like what you needed to do when Van Halen came around. And so what they did is they put in this line about M&Ms so that if they went into the green room and there were brown M&Ms, they knew that the organizers didn't read the contract. And they double checked all of their all of their electrical to make sure they didn't have a blowout in the show. Wow! It's because they they were like when they were going to venues that had never seen the type of show and the equipment that this band brought. You know, it was yeah. more than just the music; it was everything. Yep. Um, which I just think is cool. Yep, love it. Uh, one of the best videos I've ever seen. It's David Lee Roth chugging a 26 or of whiskey on stage and then continuing to perform. I'm like, that is the, the epitome of what Van Halen stood for in their heydays. <laughs> oh, there's a video of him. Like, how did he f- Oh, go ahead. No, like, how did he function after that? I have like two glasses to settle my butt down and I'm like, Ugh. he chugged a whole bottle and be like, hey, what's next? Round two. I don't know, man. They, they, they're just, they're, <sighs> David Lee Roth is such a showman. There's a video of him, like, I don't know, like 10 years ago, whenever they did one of their, like, you know, old reunion tours. And he's on stage and he, I don't know if he falls or something hits him and he busts himself open. You know, he just walks off. Van Halen and the band just keep playing. Van Halen just breaks into a, you know, a, a solo and just starts shredding his guitar to fill dead air, right? 
Yep. And then all of a sudden, out comes, you know, David with a bandage on and just keeps singing, picks right back up. You know, the yep. show must go on. Well, you got to yeah, figure that we can go on forever with stuff like this. But um, God, what a band! What a loss, man! Yep. He had so much left to give. Like you see, some of these guitarists that are still going around and playing, and like he wasn't done by any means. You know, I'm just hoping they release like all the unreleased material that that guy has written. He's talked about how much or how many hours and thousands of songs he has like that's unreleased. Like I hope they do the like a good service and just be like, hey. Here's like CD after CD and just so we can appreciate everything that like his genius really has to offer. Yeah. Well, hey, it, it's like I said, he's the Hendrix of our time, man. Yep. Um, you know, in 50 years, people are going to be looking back and saying, you guys were lucky and we wish we had more of him. And I'm hoping, like you said, there's there are these undiscovered, unlistened to, you know, tracks lying around, that, you know, in 10 years, someone like. You know, his son finds up in the attic or something, right? And just shares with the world. That would be incredible. I think it's our job as like parents to kind of keep showing our kids, like people who have that much talent and be like, hey, let these guys inspire you. Whether that's music, sports or whatever, like we were saying earlier on, like be inspired by people who do great things. Mm -hmm. So I have this one kid in my class that I teach. You know, all the kids listening to like the pop stuff, like uh, Taylor Swift or whoever. This one kid out of like, 25 kids is into heavy, or not heavy, sorry, but like classic rock. So we came to school and he was all upset. I'm like, what's wrong? It's like Eddie Van Halen died. I'm like, okay, you're 13 years old. I, I respect that. I respect it because it's so unheard of today for the youth to know the greatness of the past. Mm -hmm. so, so Hopefully, uh, Carter and Sawyer follow suit. Yeah, well, so my my kids, Ava, Sawyer, they rock out to, you know, Journey and the Beatles. Like, Ava will sing, come together. When it comes on, she goes, shh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, yep. Because that's what we play. I don't play any of that other stuff. I play the Beatles. I play Metallica. I play Van Halen. I play Journey. I play all that, all those bands that have inspired me and that I think actually you know were special talents or had something to say you know I don't like the music today as much and that's a whole other video we could get into but um my kids have my wife and I both agree are going to grow up listening to some great effing music and people like Van Halen won't be forgotten by this family I'll tell you that absolutely Anyway, guys, uh, on that note, I guess we should probably wrap it up. Um, yeah, I mean, not to sound cheesy, but rest in peace, Van Halen, and thank you. Um, and to everyone watching, thank you so much for your support. If you like the video, please like, subscribe for more weekly content, uh, and leave your comments below. Let us know what you thought about Van Halen, how he inspired you, your favorite songs. Do you agree with us? Do you not? Uh, we love your feedback, so please uh, leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time on Surviving Real Life.